I say they want the power. Chai. Them be promise us, say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they, they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Yeah. Every day, dollar, just they get the higher power. Over Naira, see them talk say, make we off mind. But then God say, my ego don't come. So my people make you lie down. Oh, yo, yo. My ego don't come, oh, yo, yo. My people make we shout oh, yo, yo. They do even no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepe. But every day, then they tip money in buck. Woman begin, they the street, they hawk. Still them talk, say, make we no talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make you shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Day off in mind. Aha. Now you wanna don't hear you. all these bad bad politicians then we call themselves politicians. When they thief our money, when no one to make the common man get what he's supposed to get for this country. When I never hear something. Now go hear one. My ego. You go show na pepe. <laughs> My young diary political. My young now, I'm all I'm a do 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 do. My young diary, I Hello there. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegu live. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I'm a wala day everywhere. As you are watching this video right now, uh, this uh, you know the the people uh, you know sanctioned or should I say uh, Tifnumbu's people they are already working around the clock to remove the chairman of Labour Party. Uh, after removing him, then they are going to replace him with somebody else. When that somebody else comes in, they're going to detach themselves from Obi. They're going to suspend him as a Labour Party member. Then they're going to withdraw his case, even if he's not going to withdraw the case. The Wala don't start in case it, they haven't told you. Wala Tiwa. Thank you so much. Share this broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite your not so friendly friends and tell them that am I a good today? Like the broadcast. That is your own offering anytime you want to. You just do it once. That's all. You don't have to do it again or and again. Okay. And then uh, sit back, relax. Or before you even do that, read the caption, read the body of this uh, description as well of this broadcast. If you are watching us live, if you're watching a replay, just do what you think you want to do. Mm-hmm. 
Treason, treason, treason. All you have to do is, uh, you know, to take your time and study the, uh, you know, the pattern of APC, egbe, egbe, propaganda, propaganda, lies, and all that, violence, and then the new one, uh, you know, accuse uh, others of what you are actually guilty of, treason and treasonable felony. You've heard it before, eh, that uh, APC, egbe, egbe, in 2015, they boldly, repeatedly, internationally, they told the world that uh, if they lost 2020, I mean 2015 elections, right, they were going to start a parallel government in Nigeria. Unfortunately, nobody actually picked them up for treason. I'll share that with you tonight. I'll talk. Wale Shoyinka tagging young people, fascist, is not a slip of tongue. In fact, it is part and parcel of uh, the organized, systemic, and then uh, the hold order attack on the young people by delegitimizing your anger, deleg I mean, delegitimizing your pain, delegitimizing your frustration, and then uh, bully you into submission. Do you know those they call the fascist? The fascists are those, right? If you know uh, Hitler, if you know uh, Mussolini, if you know Stalin, if you know all these old, 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 horrible dictators in history and their supporters who were indeed killing their oppositions, all they needed is just to find something to kill those they op that opposes them or opposed them. The only person or the only party doing that in Nigeria right now, just looking for something to call any Nigerian before they kill them, the only people doing that is APC. Wale Shoyinka belongs to the old order. And according to the young people, eh, he is not a professor. He is a con confessor. A confused confessor. Old, tricky way of uh, forcing the young people to submission. It is an old bullying order. But this time around, eh, it seems they are dealing with the, you know, with the wrong generation. Right. Also tonight, there is another drama. Nigeria is broke. The debt of Nigeria as at last year was put at 46.3 trillion naira. And as at this year, Nigeria debt is uh, over 60 trillion naira. Had that to the 31 trillion naira that Emefiole printed and then uh, gave to Bokuari's government. 31 trillion plus uh, 60 trillion. Yeah, that means mm -hmm. Nigeria is tilting towards 100 trillion naira debt. Eh? 100 years time, the generation coming after these criminals, they will be born into poverty. And they'll be struggling, and they, many of them will even die in poverty. Then now, had that of Kalu to it. Yeah, Wale Shoyinka is not being honest. And respect, they say, is a two-way thing. Reciproca. If the old people are dishonest, if they are being dishonest or economical with the truth, right? And then delegitimizing the, the uh, what do you call the um, anger of uh, the young people by either calling them overreacting, intolerance, yet the people that actually kill people for standing up uh, to them are the APC. Egbe, egbe. I hope you know this. Now, Nigeria is going to, uh, Nigeria has gotten approval to borrow $800 million. Yes, you heard me. $800 million. Guess what they want to use the money for? Nigeria is about to remove a subsidy from fuel. You are going to buy a liter of fuel in Nigeria for maybe 700 naira per liter, 800 naira per liter, 500 naira per liter. In order to cushion that effect, according to these uh, thieves, they approached the World Bank to give them $800 million. I don't want to go into converting it because I don't want to start having a dick. We still have a long night, yeah? $800 million. They want to share the money to 50 million Nigerians that will be affected by the removal of subsidy in Nigeria. They've gotten the approval. They have gotten the money. Now, the 50 million names, eh, they are collating now. I hope they pick you. So that at least eh, you won't do all this uh, uh, and you look on, you look on, and all this madness, you won't do it for free, just for your own sake. I hope they call you. 
Chugani bati she to ya ki won she omo ba de ro ni fi won ni ran o eh ah oh what more saying kingsley mohalu kingsley mogalu that uh, you know among uh, you remember when they were doing the third third force in nigeria showore eh uh, kingsley mogalu uh what's the other guy's name the one that uh hey look at that you see anyway uh femi duro to you i'll be waiting his name again duro to you wherever anyway king slimogalu that is uh he himself a former uh central bank uh, executive of uh, nigeria uh, a member of the scribe a member of the uh what do you call the establishment Somehow, somehow caught the fancy of the young people uh, in 2019, including uh, that of Omoyele Shore. In fact, that of Omoyele Shore received, uh, was that, uh, yeah, it was the time that, uh, you know, caught the international, uh, you know, campaign of Shore that many of us actually mobilized for too, right? Okay, 2023, you know what happened? Uh, Peter Obi from the supposed establishment is now the new beneficiary of uh, the people's, uh, you know what I mean, uh, kind of uh, uh, followership. But instead of them to have the kind of the similar support, right, King Slimog Alu came out today to quickly come and back uh, Wale Shoyinka. And you know what he said? The young people that he used to kind of call his, to, uh, call his own uh, constituency, he's citing for the future of young people, all of them scammers, yeah? He called them unlettered. Unlettered means illiterates. So obedient are uh, unlettered, uncultured. That's what uh, King Slimoka called the young people in defense of uh, choir confessor Wale Shoyinka. Now, one thing that people are saying they are learning, or, yeah, one thing that they said that uh, they have come to realize is the unraveling of people they thought were ordinarily, eh, would never, if given chances, they would never be on the side of the, the oppressors. So you are welcome to Nigeria. Anyway, as usual, eh, it's been fire for fire, fire for fire, until the chairman of the uh, Labour Party raised the alarm and said, they don't they take over our secretary at you. They want to, like, you know, Mr. Chairman. I'll take you there. But however, let's start with this. If you have joined and then, uh, yeah, if you have paid your offering, you've liked the broadcast, uh, you've shared it, that's all you need to do. I've given you the highlight of uh, the old broadcast tonight and more, yeah? Now, what we're going to do now is that uh, there is actually one more, mm? one more. You know, uh, Chimamanda Adichie. Chimamanda Adichie just uh, penned uh, a paper, a letter to the... Uh, what do you call it, to the uh, president of uh, America, United States of America, Joe Biden. And in that letter, mm, which I am going to read tonight, okay, in that letter, he's calling on the American uh, intelligence, American government, and the rest of them to save Nigeria of whatever is left. Once this drug dealer, once this drug baron, uh, once this election rigor, once this uh, kleptomaniac uh, uh, seek relic, Tifnumbu, gets on, yeah, then they can just forget whatever they know about Nigeria now and get themselves ready to take the influx of the ap aftermath of whatever happens, right? I'm going to read the letter. But do you know what is trending in Nigeria right now? It's APC, Egbe Kegbe, accusing the opposition of treasonable felony right, for going to court to challenge uh, an election charade, I mean, sorry, charade that they called an election, I mean, they call election, right? Now, they said people can go to court now. They are like, if you go to court and they are not this election, eh, that means you are going to create a problem. And then, Wale Shoinka came out, eh, very economical with the truth, I mean, with uh, the truth. And he picked on that this is the genesis. So the genesis is that uh, how could that say if they sweat in Umbu in, eh, it will be an illegitimate president and it will bring their uh, democracy to an end in Nigeria. Ha -ha, how could you say that? How could you say eh, that that's so bad? 
You are such a terrible one. I was like, okay. So people started calling Waleisho Inka hypocrites. Aba, hypocrites, ni. You are such an hypocrite. You should have just kept your mouth shut the same way you've kept it shut for the past, uh, you know, for the past uh, few months. When the real fascists are attacking the people you want to gaslight, Allah boosting you, you say, Professor Weary. Professor Weary, Eko Weary, so on. Ah, kilo dita and drag, Professor, kilo she. Uma ye guma dasi yo. That's what these old people have been doing. Eh? To delegitimize our own, uh, you know, our hangs and then uh, our, our, uh, uh, what do you call it? Our, our, our request. We want uh, our, it's about our future. These old people should go and get something and see somewhere. And the old people are saying the young people are like they cannot be trusted because look at them, they are so angry. And this is their future you are talking about. Tani, Tani, Professor, Shitani, Professor Wiri. Eh? That is coming around to come and label them fascist. Okay. Anyway, what then finally uh, goes on is that uh, we, in fact, you know what? APC, they have said worse. We're going to court. If you don't, this person that you want to swear in hasn't met any constitutional, uh, you know, all the constitutional uh, requirements. To be sworn in as president of Nigeria, and if you go ahead, if you do it, yeah, you would. In fact, why am I even like saying it for him? Let's take all the awards, and then uh, you can compare them. Or more, Pastor Ruga, fake Pastor Ruga, APC, in 2015, they threatened Egbe Rejolantan. Or more, this is now, this is actually, I think I, I'm beginning to understand why. These guys, they were able to get away with everything and find themselves in power. And they managed to do what they have done and they've never taken responsibility for anything. Jonathan was a very weak man. He's a good man. That's what he said. No, my Jonathan is not weak. He's a very good man. No, he's a weak president. Oh, he's a good man. Okay, yeah, he's a good man. But he's a very, very, he was a very, very weak president. They, they saw that. And I've said, I've shared the, uh, the stories behind the end of Jonathan that started right from that of uh, that evening, that night, that one weekend night, weekend night, just few days before the 2011 elections. That night, that call was uh, flown to Abuja in the presidential jet to go and meet with uh, this uh, this this meek Jonathan that said uh, the Northern Nigeria. And their politicians, they have done everything to make sure that to to I mean, don't, they've done everything to make sure that he chickened out of uh, the whole thing. Yara Dua died. You want to contest as a real president? What the hell? You're gonna, you know what I mean? They've 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 kind of scared him. And as he was running about to go and look for those who could probably like uh, come in and do something, he ran to Tifnumbu. Tifnumbu saw the president of Nigeria one on one in his vulnerability. President of Nigeria. In his the worst vulnerability, he needed that power, and he saw through that. That's exactly when he started his journey. He could be president if this one can be president. This one, so he decided to go a long way. So, when you listen to the APC Egbe, Egbe, saying Tifunubu delayed his ambition, he sacrificed this ambition for some, some people so that uh, he can have it later. That's what that's the genesis. Jonathan gave him two billion dollars. That's the deal 2011. Two solid billion dollars as Ribadu they fly as their candidates, eh? They were cashing out behind him. Well, long story short, he decided to go and mingle with uh, Boko Warrior and his jihadist CPC, build bridge. They are finally brought in APC, a Bekebe today, as part of it anyway. Jonathan was weak. They've done everything. All he needs is just propaganda. If you if you if you scare him enough, eh, he's gonna chicken out. Are you sure? Are you sure? Let's do it. Propaganda and all of that. That's exactly what they did with Jonathan. And he had to run. It is more or less like he ran away from them when he saw what they could do, what they are capable of doing. And the and once they unleashed this on Nigeria, for him to he said if he tried to stay. That's it. It doesn't matter. Like the 2015 election was already for long forgone before they even conducted it. 
Jagad the INEC chairman is a member of the plot. Eh? The chairman of uh, PDP under Jonathan is part of uh, Muazu, is part of the plot. His own minister, see, eh? his own uh, defense team, they were all in on it. It was more or less that they were counting days for him. That's exactly what happened in 2015. Today, eh? when people started looking back, they were like, how did they get away with all of this? How come we didn't notice all of this? ABC actually did all of this. They said all of this. I said, ah, maybe all of you, they drink Kool-Aid. Change, change, change Kool-Aid. Oh, more. But it was too late. They already have the power. Change you get. Now, having the power, they have now gone full throttle. Full propaganda. Election on the overall. Change you get. Eh? Full one. They have gone full gobbles. Hmm? Gobbles. See, Joseph Gobbles was uh, the Hitler's propaganda minister. He's like, he was like, a, you know, Liamo of the Hitler time. Yeah? He was the one cooking all the propaganda that the Germans then, young and old, that joined them, right? Believed so strongly that um, it took generations to try to cleanse the heart of uh, those who are descendants of those who fed from Joseph Goebbels' uh, propaganda. Till tomorrow, there are people that will tell you that everything they wrote about Hitler was a lie. I mean, it's a lie. You know why? Because whatever they were told then, Goebbels was so good that he could predict what will happen. It would be like, they are going to do this to us. You know what I mean? Like, they will be the one to do all those. Oh. Anything to justify killing people. They will just package it and package it and love now. We will clap. So APC is replicating same. Dividing everything they touch. Abby? So let's listen to what uh, Dati actually said. Let's start from there. Hmm? Uh, well, okay, yeah, I have it. Nigeria, I believe in this document. That is why I'm so lawful. That is why I'm so confident. And that is why I'm, however extreme it is, Shion, I am saying it on national TV. I don't like to take risks. I'm not taking any risks. Swearing in a ticket that has not met the constitutional requirements of the Constitution, okay, is ending democracy. Quote me on it. That's, your, that's your interpretation. That is my it. interpretation. And that is indeed a correct interpretation. You cannot swear people who have not met the constitutional requirement. You can't do that. If you did it, you have done something unlawful, something unconstitutional. And I'm repeating it. Whoever does not meet the constitutional requirement must not, must never be sworn in. You said my name. If you like, I can say it again. I'm Dirty Baba Ahmed. I'm not taking risks with my safety and with my life. But I'm repeating. Swear in anybody who does not meet the constitutional requirements of our country, you are engaging in an unconstitutional act. Mr. President, do not hold that inauguration. CJ and your, your, your lordship, do not partake in unconstitutionality. I am taking these risks for the sake of my country. Yes, it is extreme, and I'm saying it. It was more extreme for Yakubu to issue that uh, uh, certificate. It was reckless. That was, he is putting all our lives in danger. All of us were already at risk. So what is there again in me taking risks again? What have they not done against Nigeria? What have they not abused in Nigeria? Now they will take the constitution where it is clear, it says, and get 24. After that, and FCT. They fail to get it. They are going to swear this man in, and I should be afraid. I will not be. I'm telling you that on the 20th Nigeria, I believe in this. So you heard him. That's what he said. Some said that statement is de debatable, but it's not a threat. Right? And wherever you want to say, okay, you heard him. Now, I want you to listen to another one. This time around, eh? Pastor Ruga in 2015. I want you to compare the two statements now and tell me, which of them 
is actually treasonable. Eh? Take, this is before election, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the statement that uh, I read earlier on uh, attributed to the chairman of your party saying they're going to form a parallel government. Yeah. What do you make of it? Well, that is a that is a position. Do you see it as inciting? I don't think so. I don't think it's, I don't think it's inciting. Why is that inciting? There's nothing that incites about that. I don't think that that would necessarily lead anyone to violence or lead anyone to do it's anything. In, they, uh, forming the parallel government, that's not calling for anarchy. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But it could I mean, be. No, not necessarily. Look, look, look at cases. Look at cases. Let's look at political history. Look at cases where uh, persons, where, where the government, for instance, has decided on, uh, in some, in, in, where, where the government decides that they're going to ignore the wishes of the electorate and simply override the wishes of the electorate. What the opposition has usually done in such cases is to reject the results of the elections and to say that they will constitute their own government, that they will constitute a government. That's, that, 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 is an, that is simply uh, a way of taking a stand. It simply is taking a stand against the government and putting the government under pressure. That has happened in several places in Africa, several places in the world, where people have said, on account of, uh, of, of electoral injustice, they are going to do certain things and all of that. And if, 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 if they do so, so long as they do not say, so long as they do not call anyone to violence, all they're saying is that we're going to, we are also going to constitute ourselves into, into a government if you, if you fail to, uh, to uh, if, if, if you are unjust or if you, or if you ignore the wishes of the electorate. Personally, I don't think that that's necessarily inciting. Well, because, I mean, I the fact... Did you hear that? Hmm? Is a senior advocate of nuisance too. He is a fake pastor. Did you see his face there? He is now a motivational speaker everywhere he goes now. If he's not singing the praises, cell, hey, let me hear yeah, yeah, that, or then he'll be a motivational speaker. You won't even think he's the vice president of Nigeria. Yeah? He goes there and says, hey, yeah, you know what I mean? If he's not doing all of that, he'll be sharing money. Diwiri eh, was sharing 10,000 10, naira. Because they want to lift 10 million Nigerians out of poverty. Okay, so they started sharing 10, 10 dollars, 10, 10, I mean, sorry, 10, 10, no, 10,000 naira. How much is 10,000 naira again? 10, 10 pounds, right? 11 pounds. They started giving people 11 pounds. Okay, not that everyone anyway. So it was like, okay, yeah, we'll lift 10 million. So they want to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. That's exactly, they want to eat, uh, lift 100 million Nigerians. That's his own idea of economic recovery. He even went to the U.S. and promoted the same thing. It wasn't like a one-off. They were promoting it. They were threatening Jonathan. If they burn you well, we go start our own government. But wouldn't that cause anarchy? No, 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 not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. He went to America during the campaign too. And he repeated the same thing. We will form our own government. Uh, on last. The question of uh, introducing a parallel government and post election, possible post election crisis and all that. Now, it's important to bear in mind that it is really up to the ruling government, to the ruling party, to ensure that elections are free and fair. I will make that point repeatedly that. It does not lie in the control of the opposition to ensure free and fair elections. It is up to the ruling party. And everywhere and every time that you have seen free and fair elections, you will never find any kind of crisis thereafter. For example, the June 12th election that we were talking about, there's absolutely no crisis, no violence, nothing. Because there's a free and fair election. And free and fair elections always come with very little power. Now, in the event, and the APC has said, that in the event that there is electoral lobby that we are robbed of, 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 the, of, 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 our, of our rightful place, of, of our victory, that we will establish a parallel government. The details of that, of course, we will, we will speak about only when the time comes. But we will certainly, we will certainly provide a moral alternative for the people of Nigeria. We certainly will not accept 
So, because of uh, this discovery, I know a lot of you were under their spell. Some people who don't like me today or who are so ashamed to come and apologize to me. Eh? We were then, they were feeding fat on the APC propaganda, eh? just like you are witnessing today. And whoever doesn't believe in this frosters, then you are considered enemy of Nigeria. Give me a sec. Misdefining and misunderstanding our priorities. And we have to be very honest with ourselves. I'm an economist, and I always talk economics. And we look at the numbers, and we look at poverty. If you look at all the poverty indices in the world today, you find that in southwest Nigeria, the incidence of poverty is 20%. In the northwest, it is 80%. The northeast, it's 80%. So majority of them would today would say, I don't like that, Maya, is because they were under the spell of APC back then. If you told them then that uh, these people are criminals, strange bedfellows, thieves, murderers, smugglers, heroin takers, heroin dealers, drug runners, uh, gun runners, kidnappers, terrorists, jihadists, how could you bring all these people together and say they want to change Nigeria for good, if not for bad? So they were drinking then. And when people started seeing some of these videos now, a lot of you are seeing this for the first time. I've been, uh, you, there are many, there are many, many of those horrible things they said and they did. They eventually eh, gave birth to the murderous APC, that you have today, the criminal APC gang that you have today, the cold hearted murder murderers that you have as APC today, who probably feels like uh, Nigerians have offended them, like they would defend terrorists. Have you ever seen anywhere government of a country will be defending terrorists and they'll be punishing their own citizens? Eh? Only in Nigeria because terrorists are in charge. Thank God they have succeeded. They have divided Nigeria beyond repair. Nobody can fix Nigeria together again. You can continue to try. Oh, because me, I always believe that there's no harm in trying. Keep trying. But they did and said, Horrible, horrible things that laid the foundation for what you are witnessing in Nigeria today. Eight years after. Eh? Some of you are now, you're like cursing them. Some of you are regretting. Some of you, you cannot even like, uh, you know, sort of recover anymore. You are done and done for. No be so. Pastor Ruga. So today people are now asking, well, Kilo, what is wrong with professors in Nigeria, Gonsef? What is really the problems of the professors in Nigeria? Eh? Now professors they rig election. No be so. Now professors they announce the rig the election. Eh? Now professors can't see the defend rigged election. When you begin to hear professors, because uh, I say professor, now so professorship useless. I've been at this kind of professors, they are useless professors. Ne? When you hear pre pre names like Professor Jemi Oshibajo, Professor, eh? Professor Atairu Jega, Professor, Professor Wale Shoyinka, Professor, Professor Jakubu Mamudu, Professor. Go and look at those who are rigging elections in Rivers, in Lagos, and all these places. You will be hearing Professor, Professor. Eh, you know, professor will learn in Nigeria, you know. What kind of professor learning, you know? 
eh? Professor Elibi, Professor um, Professor Criminals, and Professor Enablers. All they have to do is to just manufacture BB grammar. Confuse you. Say, so you know who you are talking to, sir? We tell ambassador, sir. I am German ambassador. I am Professor Ajigad Adagwodo Abajo. Stagnant water. No wonder. You get what I mean? Like, people are now saying that Iran Professor Oshi will go to the one Nigeria he can save. Who are these useless professors here and there? What sad all this a useless attack? They are more see when you look at what the professors, professors in Nigeria, what they have contributed to Nigeria, trust me, eh? There is no direct in anything progressive. Now, the young people, listen to this. So I'm just saying this. So young, young people that all these old criminals and their friends are trying to gaslight, call names. They call them intolerant. They call them not hey, 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 smart. You don't even know how to have conversation. Conversation with who? With you people who are trying to make them accept abnormalities. And they rejected all this nonsense. So, and therefore, you decided to gaslight them. Professor Oshiwoni and Professor Wiri, Professor Wiri Wugon, tell me the invention of all the professors in Nigeria. Tell me. What did they say? Ah, Professor Wale Shoyinka is not a fool. See, now these young, young people, you know what they are doing? They don't give a damn about all this, all of you old, old wearies. Listen, that's the problem. Eh? Yesterday, somebody came and he said, My Egun, eh? Listen, I, I, I mean, I, I have been following you. I have been following you, my Egun, for a long time. And uh, I just want you to, uh, to be very careful. Because, uh, you know, uh, I support you on this uh, Yoruba nation, uh, this or that, right? But we need to respect our elders. And I want you to even, in fact, Mayegun, I want you to stop every, all these things about this obedient, obedient. Let us face Yoruba nation. Omo, I know they are, I know they are game. Omo, retreat here. I have been following you. We need to respect our elders. Is a trick. Sure, you get. When people say, I have so much respect for you, but I don't like the way you disrespected so so and so, it is a trick. In fact, sure, you want to know, it is uh, one of the oldest manipulative tricks that people use. They, people use all the time. When people tell you that they respect you, and that respect is about to go out of the window, okay, because of. Uh, what you say or what you don't say, it is called conditional respect, Abby. Now, when I was reading that comment, two things were going through my mind. I was like, this person is not my follower. Number one, he's not. Now, one of those Lori Brukus that always kind of try to play the game of a respect because they are Yoruba. I am Yoruba. Or it's an old trick. So you get, they will write long nonsense. They will be writing as if to say, right, they are neutral. Just to let you feel like uh, feel guilty that you just woke up and you started disrespecting some Oluri Brukus called elders and leaders because then get fed then get a uh, white hair. So two things. Number one, you are not my friend. So if I should respond the way I wanted to, eh, I'm going to get so angry that uh, eventually I'm just going to get that person off my page because I can do that. Get the person off my page completely and the comments. So I went there and I was like, uh, I know your trick. Alaye, if you have any respect for me, and uh, that respect, somehow, somehow, eh? Oh, in fact, in fact, if you are following Mayegun because of uh, Mayegun's uh, advocacy, preachings, and in fact, support for anything Yoruba, eh? And you can use that too. I respect you. And you know you are a Yoruba, and Yoruba nation. Let us talk about Yoruba nation. When I am talking about uh, the Olori Brukus that gave birth uh, to the advocacy for Yoruba Nation, you want me to stop talking about those Olori Brukus because you respect me so much and you don't like the way I talk about them. And you are, you are I mean, I am about to lose my respect. The respect you have for me, I'm about to lose it. Okay. Number one, you are not my follower. If you are my follower, right, you will understand that uh, this is my ego's diary. It is not Yoruba Nation diary. How many times going to have your you gone? Eh? This is Mayegun's diary political, not Yoruba nation political, Biafra Republic political, 
or rather why the public political show the bruku by any oh when we are talking about something that's when you want to bring number one i don't need your respect keep it i told him i said keep your respect i don't want your respect okay and then uh, number two the older generation that are demanding respect they have no respect for any of us have you not noticed they are actually making demand they are telling us what to do you don't understand that eh and I, you know, my ego, I respect you a lot. Go back, Jeff, and go back, Jeff, and respect you. For my ego, I look at all respect, lower. Motor respect, lower anybody. Eh? Go to go, go back, Jeff, and go to no fun, go to no fun, or to near at what you respect. Eh? Look at me at respect. Eh? You know, when people say something, when you just say, I mean, well, this useless, this, 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 what about your papa? Don't you have papa? Say your papa and mama no train you well, ni. Don't you know that you have to, as a Yoruba, you have to respect the elders? All these are emotional blackmail. They don't want to be interested in why. Instead of saying, come, why, why, why are you angry? Hey, Mayegu, sorry, sorry. I mean, I have listened to you all this uh, while. In fact, I've been asking myself that uh, what could make this young man so angry? With Nigeria, and they said many of them, Abi. Oh, Amayegu, I'm so so sorry. See, my generation, we we are in our seventies, eighties. We we hold you apologies, and we have no right to question how you ask or question those who are leading you. That's what you should expect from elderly people who don't want to try and bully you because they are elders. Abulori brukuni at yene. So they will now try to say, hey, don't you have home training? Eh? Let us respect our elders. So people now share a peak. So therefore, those who call themselves elders, they have the, you know, it's like having the license to just misbehave. Sure, you get like, ah, there's a drag like in this house. Yeah. I am old enough to be your baba. Can you tell your baba that your baba is wrong? Say, ah, it's true. Uh, I, should, I cannot tell my papa that my papa is wrong, yo. Sure, you get it. Because even if my papa is wrong, eh, because he's my papa, I cannot tell him that, uh, daddy, you are so wrong, yo. Say, so don't ever tell me, talk to me like that. Don't let me curse you. This uh, white here, you see in my head, eh? You see this, eh? If I use this white here to curse you, you are finished, nia, oh. Be careful, oh. Elderly. What elders used to chop, eh? Uh, my money, he did at the bottom of uh, my money rap. Oh. Don't let me show you why I'm as a and she is a it's yeah, we're a good book. Now, you know why? Did you know the young the young people now look and say, I'm glory brook. Ah, 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 don't say that. Yeah, Balaga, don't tell like Balaga, I'm glory brook. You know, Nisa, because they want the young people, right? To have no voice per se, and to help either to kind of downplay the concerns of the young people or to dismiss it outrightly. And those of you who don't listen, they say, We are, we are elders. Sit down there. We are talking to you. We are the elders. Do you know that uh, we are elders? I mean, like, that's how I feel. That's how I wanted to reply that person. Yes, I said, but politely, I said, Oh, Benny, oh, Benny, you're totally alone. I respect me. You need, can, you, can you respect that from What is your respect going to do for anyone? Right? When the older generation, instead of them to actually begin to ask themselves and say, oh, more, things have scattered, though. Things have gone out of hand, though. Now that these young, young people are interested in what is actually going on in Nigeria, look at everywhere now. Eh? As in, take that reality in, not you trying to gaslight them. Imagine Mogalu calling young people in Nigeria. He called them. Unlettered, eh? Unlettered, uncultured. Yemo galu no, mo galu, eh? Because uh, you know it's like somebody like uh, Eme Fioli, eh? They will now say Eme Fioli now. We now work among economists. Abi, as a Eme Fioli, former central bank governor, eh? Mo galu, former by a central bank executive. 
We, we, we did this whole policy. We did that policy. I didn't hear any, sir. Which policy? The policy you did, whether past and present, nobody the Nigeria with this. So. The young people that are now affected, their future, their education, their health, eh, are all at stake in that uh, contraption called Nigeria. But hey, they are overreacting. Hey, they are intolerant. Hey, you, they have no respect. Really? Um, obedience, if you respect them. Imagine para for you if you pay any, because it's called bullying. It is called bullying. They will bully you to, to what have you. They will accuse you of doing what they are doing. All the illegalities, all the criminal stuff they are doing, they will point the fingers elsewhere. Eh? And no wonder Obi said he's under pressure to leave Nigeria. Femi Fonica, your day, as usual, quickly fired. Eh? And it was like, uh, please go, don't come back. See you. People wait there. People wait, wait, wait. You know, these are the people that are actually like, uh, you know, riling the young people in Nigeria. People like uh, Femi Fonica, your day, okay, who is uh, a man for hire, is available for hire. So he's on social media. The territory of the young people, eh? the territory of the young people, these young, young people, they are so smart. That's another problem. That the old people are not, they are not understanding. They don't need your advice. They want you to advise yourselves. Have you, see, I'm a young man, right? I don't need any older person's advice anymore when it has to do with this, my life and the future. You know why? I don't need your advice. Advise yourselves, especially, you know, if you are in Nigeria and you are calling yourself an elderly, elder person, elderly person. I'm not sure you respect the elderly person. I've been sharing this, sir. Do you know why I'm actually using this word, eh? I want those of you who have that kind of entitlement, but eh, in disguise, we're in this disguise. Eh, this is my ego, I'm studying him. I like him. But it's like he is so uncaught. Emiwa uncaught. Eh? Emiwa eh, is, is, is so disrespectful, too. Like he's so. Uh, what other one? Lamatun uh, kwemi, you know. You are too, you are so petty. Uh -huh. This is my going is so petty. Maybe because I don't hear any sir. Like the reason why I have to keep saying that is to let you know that uh, respect is reciprocal. It's like two way thing. You cannot fail the young people, right? And at the same time, hide behind. We are held as a regime. You, I'm an elderly person. I am a professor. I am a this or that. So, what has your elderly, your elderliness? as well as your professorship, what exactly have they really contributed to Nigeria? Ah, you are talking to a noble laureate like that. You are talking to somebody who is a former deputy governor of Central Bank. Mayegun, ah, omogao. Ah, honestly, oh, let us be, ah, Mayegun, how could you say that? So, noble laureate. Like somebody who wrote, uh, the person who wrote, uh, uh, yeah, what do you call it? A novel. You write a novel, fiction, or real. Abi? Literary, no Bible. So people got a uh, Nobel laureate for peace, for engineering peace, for discovery that actually changes lives. So you get. And unfortunately, that's another part of so many of you, the older generation, that wanted to kind of make all this your title, title, uh, a doctor, a doctor, professor, and all those nonsense titles that you love so much that you work all your life to get, eh? Somebody like Wale Shoyinka, we, I mean, we, it doesn't actually like really, really belong to this uh, generation, so to say. You know why? A lot of them, eh? Okay, I'm, I'm, I belong to that generation that actually read part of what Wale Shoyinka wrote. But you see all this Gen Z, eh? Majority of them don't even know whether Shoyinka was writing a book or not. In fact, all they have to do is to just go on Google and read who is Wale Shoyinka. That's it. They don't have to read this book because they don't read what you have anymore. Abi? So don't think the same influence that Shoyinka have on people like us, eh? those of us who were born eh, in the 70s and in the 80s. You are now dealing with the generations in the of, uh, what do you call it, the generation of uh, the 90s, the 2000s, Abi? These are the generation that you, these older criminals, they didn't plan for. So if somebody like Wale Shoyinka want to address them, if anybody who says, who belongs to that older that want to address them, eh? you must address them, eh? As somebody who understands them, not somebody who wants to impose something on them and begin to ask stupid questions. Don't you have home training? Eh? Majority of them don't know showing as a writer that you think uh, that you know him as. And their future, now they know better how much the likes of Shoyinka influenced. Oh, Shoyinka also fought for democracy. Oh, 
Remember showing car the lock showing car up uh, in three three years. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Solitary confinement too. for fighting the military for fighting this and that. He, oh, Benny, you see this generation, they would have appreciated all the effort of the likes of Ewole Shoinka and others eh, if today they are living in a free Nigeria where they can easily express themselves. You know, like the Americans, eh? Sanich, put it that way. Eh? Say, okay, oh, the British show. Whatever their history and those who died and those who whatever, their children today will look back and say, well, we thank God that uh, they did. But today, Shoinka is not dead. Others are not dead. They are still alive, eh? And they are gaslighting the people that nobody planned any future for. And there is actually nothing eh, in place as to say, oh, yeah, the, uh, our, our, our heroes passed. They did this for us. Well, let's just be grateful. And they are now watching the same people, gaslighting them, calling them fascists. And you are asking of respect. You're all kinico, You better advise yourselves. The last people that will respect some of you, some of those old relics and the rest of them are just going to be people like us. Here you get the generation of the 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Those are the generation that will still be showing some level of mixed reaction. You see those ones from the 90s? Eh? If you don't mend your way and you're still, you're still working about us, I'm an elder, I'm an, an elder, join my Egon's diary political. I will tell them when they are dragging you too. So they said, Obi said he's leaving. Kilote, pressure on you. Sorry, it's not. He didn't say he's leaving. He said, Obi said they are pressurizing him to leave Nigeria. Why? Pressure on you. So I said today, mm -hmm. the, let me tell you something. When uh, the real Yorubas, who ordinarily would never support uh, injustice, I mean, Yoruba man, I can say this boldly. Yes, we do have uh, the criminals who are cashing in on uh, criminalities and then uh, others. Sure, you get. But real Yorubas won't. Real Yoruba elders and leaders will never compromise. And in fact, if they have to take a position, they will not blink. Yorubas, who saw that uh, Nigeria was tearing apart, breaking up. Mm? They said, if the Nigeria political class, the military, if they could all agree that uh, Yorubas have been cheated, maltreated in the Project Nigeria, and in fact, if there is anything to make sure that Yorubas don't leave Nigeria, it is when, the, when Nigeria uh, transit to democratic system of government, it should be given to a Yoruba man to be the first president. This was like unwritten. They didn't write anything. They didn't debate. They didn't do uh, who those against, those in favor. They didn't do all of that. It was just like a, it was like a convention. So you get like a convention to say, okay, that's what we have agreed. And just like that, eh? Even Alex Ekweme, that ran uh, for position of president inside the PDP. Oba Sonjo, that was uh, Alex Ekweme and the rest. When they were actually like talking and talking and forming political parties, then oh, Oba Sonjo, the prisoner. When Oba Sonjo came out, right, the Igbos, the Southeasterners in PDP, delegate all of them, eh, they all voted for Oba Sonjo Yoruba. It was just like a directive. Like it wasn't like, a, I mean, like a convention. PDP, Yoruba, AD, Yoruba, other parties there too, Yoruba. Just, it's like, okay, if we want to keep this country together, let us do everything to reconcile with the Yorubas. And everybody agreed. We didn't, we didn't lose 3 million people. We didn't lose 5 million people. We didn't fire, I mean, we didn't lose any part of a Yoruba land to civil war. Sure you get, the people, that they bombed their city, their towns, their villages, that they, they you know, that, that they, they, they killed their women and children there. All those, let me tell you this, eh? Go and read your history. You see all those cities you are seeing right now in uh, Eastern Nigeria, especially eh, the places like Enugu, uh, Anambra, uh, Imo, uh, where is that again? Ebony, mm? uh, Abia, all those places. That they finally caught and caught and caught and caught after they started creating state from them. They caught them and caught them and caught them until they decided to put them in the middle as a small part of Nigeria. The Igbo land. Eh? In fact, 
uh, what do you call it? Just give me a sec. I'll take you to Abuja first one. Now, the Labour Party office is under attack. All the doors at the national headquarters have been broken and they have entered the office, purportedly trying to hold a meeting in the office. That meeting is not authorized by me, it's not authorized by the National Working Committee. The Labour Party is under serious attack, personally and individually, because of the case we have against the APC in court. All of this blackmail, all of this attack is tailored towards destroying the mandate that has been freely given to us by Nigerians. Nigerians must rise to the occasion. Uh, I hope they would. So the Igbos, hmm? just like that, we didn't lose much, okay? All the eastern part of Nigeria, you saw this place you call the Niger Delta today. Eh? The South South, as they call them. Eh? They were part of Biafra land, the eastern part of Nigeria. In fact, the person that actually proposed the name Biafra eh? happened to be one of uh, the supposed the jaw leaders when they finally caught them off. And you know what Nigeria did? Nigeria, right, pretended that they would develop all these other areas. And if you go to this, whatever you see in Enugu, Abia, uh, Anambra, and uh, all these uh, eastern states in Nigeria today, they were built by the Igbos themselves. Can you believe that? Eh? Everything you see in there, just uh, now, you see, in another part of Nigeria, right, you can point out what federal government of Nigeria has built or is building. You can't point at any in eastern Nigeria. Can you believe that? And say, oh, yeah, this is the completed in the last 63 years. So, okay, cut it down. After the civil war in 1970, in 1970. Now, multiply that till now. That's going to be like 53 years, Abi. 53 years of after the civil war. There is no any major real project of Nigeria government in eastern part of Nigeria. And it's deliberate. So those are the people that uh, you want to compare with the rest of Nigeria, right? And say, eh, they should go and develop their land. They should go and do that. They have always been doing that. If when you point at uh, railways, when you point at airports, when you point at a federal road, when you point at a federal medical centers and the rest of that, when you point at things right, like that in other parts of Nigeria, go and check those funding uh, deals in Eastern Nigeria. Then you understand that you are living in a, in a country that is, uh, we call many Nigerias, many Nigerias. There's never one Nigeria. But still, the, the prominent Yorubas, intelligent Yorubas said, if they don't want to I mean, if they don't want to uh, restructure Nigeria now, at least let's just start the healing. If you want to heal Nigeria, let an Igbo man be the next president. They've never been. There's, a, there's also an unwritten convention. Unwritten convention that, uh, I mean, that uh, an Igbo man will never be president of Nigeria. All they need is just to just give them any excuse, anything flimsy or what have you. Igbo man will never be president of Nigeria. They've never been, and they will never be because. Those who claim to be the owners of Nigeria, they will never let that happen. So the Afeni Ferry said they are endorsing Obi. What happened? Tifnumu went there and divided them. Factions automatically, I mean, he, he, he immediately created factions in Afeni Ferry. Eh? Labour Party said that, uh, sorry, uh, Niger NLC, Nigerian Labour Congress. They said they are now endorsing a Labour Party candidate as their own uh, governor, I mean, presidential candidate without delay. Eh? Tinubu and his people, eh? they created faction. You may not know, Abi. Oh, they have created faction in NSC as we talk, as we speak right now. NLC. Now, just uh, two days ago, we started seeing things like this person. You see that old man? That with his Inugbo. Eh? That is uh, Mr. Abi Alaji. No, I think I should say Mr. Or oh, Alaji, Mr. Lamidia Papa. You see that man on the left? Lamidia Papa. A Tifnumbus to G. 
has just uh, granted an interview to say a press conference to say he is the chairman of a Labour Party in Nigeria. And the attempt is to make sure that that one, that chairman there that said that they have invaded their uh, secretariat in Abuja, Abere. Eh? So what will happen next is that, uh, you know, they will suspend Peter Obi. You will hear announcement that he's been suspended. Okay? That's the effort, even though there is already a court, uh, I think they've already gotten a court uh, judgment. A court judgment that, uh, what do you call it here? A court judgment that says, all oh, this... Uh, our shenanigans, right? But hey, Natif Numbui, the representative, oh, look at his face. You've never seen him. You won't see him. Eh? Including the judges that will give them the court judgment and everything. The media that will begin to invite him. You will begin to hear, see him on TV. Eh? You begin to see him on radio and every, I mean, hear him on radio, on newspaper. Natif Numbui, they work for. When he's done, he will disappear. You won't hear him again. You will never see him again. Okay? And I think mm, when he, when uh, Obi said he's under pressure, right? This is the kind of pressure he probably must be referring to. Again, now the Labour Party office is under attack. All the doors at the national headquarters have been broken, and they have entered the office, purportedly trying to hold a meeting in the office. That meeting is not authorized by me. It's not authorized by the National Working Committee. The Labour Party is under serious attack. Personally and individually, because of the case we have against the APC in court, all of this blackmail, all of this attack is tailored towards destroying the mandate that has been freely given to us by Nigerians. Nigerians must rise to the occasion, defend their country, defend democracy, and defend the Labour Party. Thank you. <laughs> Nigerians arise. Now, BDN just call them. Now, those ones, they wait for protests. Since they don't they wait, say me, they just tell them. So, yeah, go on. Kingsley Mogalu wrote extensively. Very good stuff about this uh, murderer on the right. This